The script for this episode of How America Works is special because this script is all about the paper it's written on. Full disclosure, when we first discussed paper as a topic for this series, I wasn't sure it was relevant. I mean, we live in a digital world, right? And nowadays, most everything, it seems, is documented up there in the cloud somewhere. But make no mistake, down here on Earth, paper is the thing that makes it real and official. From your birth certificate, to your marriage certificate, to your death certificate, to the deed on your home, to the diplomas hanging on your wall, and virtually everything in your wallet, from your driver's license, to your money, to your vaccination card, your entire existence is memorialized on paper, just like our countries, our constitution, the laws of the land, every truth we hold to be self-evident is preserved on paper. Along with every novel ever written, every poem, every mathematical theorem, every Sudoku, every crossword puzzle, and yes, every square hanging in rolls in lavatories across this great land, waiting patiently to answer the call of duty. Try replacing that with something in the cloud. This episode is dedicated to the men and women who work every day, making sure we never run out of paper because they know better than most how America works. Of all the products that surround our everyday existence, few are quite so ubiquitous or important as paper, probably because it can do a lot of really useful things, like capturing our thoughts, carrying our goods, putting money in our pockets, or, among other things, cleaning up our messes. Small wonder, then, that each and every American uses about 700 pounds of it per year or that America, as a whole, is one of the world's leading paper producers, churning out 200,000 tons of it every day. And believe it or not, the paper manufacturers of our country are busier than they've ever been, in part thanks to the pandemic, which has brought about record highs in the demand for paper hygiene products and is still driving the 200-plus paper makers of our nation harder than ever to keep us well supplied with those products and more. Take International Paper in Columbus, Mississippi, for example. Here, more than 300 men and women labor day in and day out to sustainably produce the pulp needed to create our paper products. And keeping an eye on all of that is mill manager David Phillips. Here in Columbus, we take pine trees and make them into products that you use every day, like Bounty and Charmin and baby diapers and baby wipes and things like that that are very important in our lives. Whether it's bound for paper towels or personal care products, the process of making that pulp is much the same. First, you need a lot of wood chips. Then, they have to be digested, a process through which the actual wood fibers are separated from the stuff that holds them together, called lignin. Once that's done, those fibers, also known as cellulose, are bleached, pressed flat, and dried into sheets of pulp. Those are the broad strokes, anyway. But we'll get into further detail as we go, starting with the wood that comes in as either whole logs or, oftentimes, pre-cut chips. So chip trucks are pulling onto the dumpers. They'll be dumping the chips out. We can get up to 200 of these chip trucks a day. It's really important that we keep them working like they're supposed to. Equally important is ensuring that these chips arrive like they're supposed to, something David and his colleagues keep a close eye on with every inbound truck. These are some of the loblolly pine chips that we get uh, from sawmills in the area. We're sampling them to know kind of what the size is. We want chips that are between 2 and 10 millimeters, and everything else that's not 2 and 10, we don't pay as much for. So looks like a good quality load to me. We're going to take the chips and cook those and bake that into the pulp that we make. Not far away, the pulp making process is already in the works. With International Paper's resident digester breaking down wood chips by the ton and preparing them to be bleached. And keeping tabs on that and more is operations technician Janice Buckhalter. 
This is the control room. This is where everything happens. So part of our responsibility, see all the monitors in. We have a lot of trends that we have called up that we look at at all times. It lets us know things about levels, temperatures, and pressures, which is key to our operation. It's a lot to monitor and might as well be Greek to the uninitiated. But thanks to more than 30 years on the job, Janice can tell when things are working exactly as intended and when they aren't. This chip being released green inches of water is kind of high. So right now, we're going to go upstairs, check out this chip being released screen and get it cleaned off. Chip bin release screens are essential to relieving pressure from the system. And if left unclean, this one could shut down the whole works. So Janice will need to head eight stories up to defuse the situation. Woo. Woo. So I got my little headlamp so I can count and see what I'm doing. I mean, you can actually see, like, the gases that's coming up from the chip bin. And because fines and sawdust that's covering these little slot is free, when you look at this, these little slots have to be open. Fortunately for Janice, clog screens like this one are usually nothing an air lance can't handle. I'm going to just gradually ease the air on because I don't want anything blowing back in my face. And I'll try to go as far as I can to the other side of this line until I'm able to try to clear the whole circumference of this screen. Valve wide open, just definitely clearing these slots in the screen. All right, turn this off to see this. I can definitely see uh, the improvement in the gas stream. So I think, I think we're done here. My budget back up till next time. Woo! All right, on to the next pass. Janice isn't the only one who has to fix issues on the fly, because with all the steaming, chipping, pulverizing, and pressing that goes on here, it should come as no surprise to learn that the machinery at International Paper takes quite a beating. So to keep everything in working order, there are guys like shift technician Bo Dyer. You're pretty much responding to breakdowns or responding to an operator trying to get equipment going or whatever the need might be. You never know what you're going to be doing or what you're going to be working on. Well, that's not entirely true, because Bo does know what he'll be working on momentarily. One of the four automated stations responsible for wrapping rolls of finished pulp with plastic. And it seems that this one has been acting up lately. We got an intermittent problem going on, and I talked to the operator, and I'm going to have to go up underneath this Axial table here and take a look at some switches. First, though, Bo will need to shut this station down completely, which, when dealing with electricity in excess of 500 volts, requires a fair amount of safety gear. That's my gloves. Those gloves right there are ready for a thousand volts. Your hard hat, your shield. And once I get the cabinet open, we will verify that we're electrically isolated and it will be safe to go in and work on this south line. With that out of the way, Bo can get down to the business at hand. All right, what I think we got going on here after talking to the operator, the roll comes down and hits this axial receiver right here, and this is going to lower and as it's lowering, we're not seeing it sometimes. So we got some prompt switches underneath the, the table here, and I'm going to need to get under the table here and see what I can find and see uh, if that's where our problem's at. Once under the table, Bo is quick to spot the problem. OK, you got prompt switches on both sides of this axial station down here. We're thinking this guy right here might be the issue. It does appear to be a little bit loose here. It looks like I need to slide it down roughly about a half an inch here. I'm going to have to loosen up this lock nut and run this switch in. All right. 
I'm gonna lock it down right there. I'm hoping this right here is gonna resolve our issue. But to find out for sure, Bo will need to fire this station back up and bring in one of his colleagues for a second opinion. If you would, I'd like to get it started up. Let's run it and uh, let me know what you see. Oh yeah, this right here is the best. If it messes up, you just call me, but I believe I got it. Yep. <laughs> 